cells, we classify tissues either as permanent tissues where you have the function of differentiation that's very well developed and the second one is meristematic tissues. Meristematic tissues are basically the dividing tissues where growth actually happens and they remain till the time you have growth. As soon as the growth is over, these meristematic tissues degenerate. And therefore, we understand the formation of or the growth of a plant cell or a plant which is very different from an animal cell. Now, when we come on to the permanent tissues, we can further classify those as simple permanent tissues and complex permanent tissues. Simple permanent tissues would include parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma. We'll understand that in a while. However, complex would include xylem and phloem. So, xylem and phloem would be part of your complex. And this simple would include parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. Now, this is a very basic framework. Once you are clear with this framework, we'll proceed with each of these elements one by one. As we said, plant cells, you have localized growth. Most of the tissues that are present are supportive in nature. And these supportive tissues that are there are usually dead. And they, they are therefore adopted for a sedentary lifestyle. That means a lifestyle which does not actually require a lot of movement. The only function is to help plant stand upright. Okay. So that's one of the major differences as i said this meristematic tissue is the region where you have growth that occurs so meristematic can be further divided into three parts it's apical intercalary and lateral so we'll understand that in a while but let's first talk about meristematic tissues as i said these are the growing tissues so those are either present at the tip of the plant so you have the growth that occurs at the tip of the plant. Let's say a very good example is I have a plant here and it's growing. So definitely the growth would be towards the topmost region. If I put a nail here and I observe it after one month, will the position of the nail change? Obviously not because the plant is growing at the apical region. So this region is the apical region or the region of the actual growth of the plant. The next is within the nodes, you have the intercalary region that is present. And this intercalary region is another region of growth. And then you have lateral meristem meristematic tissues that are present. And these lateral tissues basically help in increasing the girth of the plant. That means, let's say you talk about a banyan tree. So 100 years banyan tree and 200 years old banyan tree, the girth of the uh, stem would differ or the trunk would differ. And this is where you understand the lateral growth that takes place. And this is also called as the cambium of the plant. So these are the three divisions under which we talk about the growth that is taking place. And as I said, intercalary is important because intercalary is the growth that takes place at the nodal areas. So wherever you have nodes that are present, you would have growth that would be actually seen. Now, talking about these meristematic tissues, they are active tissues with a dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus that is present. There is no vacuole in the early stages that is seen. And the cell wall is a very thin cell wall made of a uh, kind of cellulose that is seen. And these meristematic tissues actually do not require anything to store because they are in their growing phase. And because of a dense cytoplasm, no vacuole, we can say that there is no storage that is present. They take active role in uh, development and finally, as they grow, there is the differentiation that starts. As soon as the differentiation starts, specialization occurs and it moves as a permanent tissue and it loses its ability to divide. So there, that is the end of the meristematic tissue. Now, as the meristematic tissue ends, you have the permanent tissue that comes in. And as I said, permanent tissue has a specialized task. 
it has a permanent shape size function that it performs and there is differentiation that occurs these permanent tissues have vacuole for storage no vacuole is present in meristematic tissues so be very careful on to the words that i am emphasizing again and again because these are very important part of your mcqs so when you say meristematic tissues there is no vacuole that is present however permanent tissues have a role in storage and therefore you have vacuoles that are present the cell wall is made up of either cellulose lignin or suberin we'll understand each of these components one by one so let's understand the diagram of a permanent tissue permanent tissue the outermost layer that is there is known as cuticle below the cuticle you have a thin layer which is epidermis the role of the epidermis is to provide a kind of uh, shield and then below the epidermis you have collenchyma followed by parenchyma and within further if we take out a cross section of the plant we would understand there are xylem and phloem xylem and phloem are basically the vascular bundles part of the vascular bundle and they have their role in conduction these are part of complex permanent tissue right now what we'll understand is a simple permanent tissue so simple permanent tissue let's first talk about parenchyma so parenchyma is the most common of those the most simplest function is storage so it consists of unspecialized unspecific cells with a very thin cell wall that is present most of the cells are loosely packed and they have large spaces for storage so parenchyma the best function that you can explain is storage this parenchyma is further specialized if there is a role that is required to perform photosynthesis you have chlorophyll that is required and therefore these are co called as chlorenchyma so understand these terms very very carefully the next is if there is a plant which is floating so there is buoyancy that is required for example a good example is water hyacinth commonly seen in the lake bodies so you have buoyancy now this buoyancy helps the plant to float uh, because of the air cavities that are seen and the plants which have these air cavities are known as parenchyma so this parenchyma has two specialities we so, saw one is where we talk about the presence of chlorophyll and photosynthesis so we call it chlorenchyma in the next case we call it parenchyma where you have air cavities for buoyancy and helps the aquatic plants float the next is collenchyma collenchyma is basically seen for flexibility so if you have seen there is a strong gush of wind and the plant does not break down it just bends and regains its shape and that is the flexibility that is provided by collenchyma so collenchyma provides the flexibility and bending without being breaking it provides a firm mechanical support to the plants and is usually seen in the region of the leaf stacks below the epidermis so immediately you have the cuticle below the cuticle the epidermis and below the epidermis you have collenchyma that is present these are irregularly thickened with very uh, small intercellular spaces that are seen the next is very very important it is known as collenchyma as i said simple permanent tissue three of those are very very important parenchyma we already talked about collenchyma which provides flexibility parenchyma which works with the storage the last one is collenchyma function of this collenchyma is to make plant hard and stiff so it has dead cells a good example is uh, the husk of the coconut that is seen so the husk of the coconut is made up of dead tissues and those are known as collenchyma you have long and narrow uh, structures that are seen with uh, the presence of lignin so so far we were talking about cellulose as one of the component now we are talking about lignin as one of the components and these have a very thick wall with no intercellular spaces collenchyma 
there was little in intercellular spaces parenchyma there was lot of intercellular spaces but skull and chyma you have no intercellular spaces that is seen it is mainly present in the regions of the stem around the vascular bundles that are seen and in the veins of the leaves or the coverings of the seeds the coverings of the nuts that are seen and the cell wall is made up of lignin so skull and chyma cell wall made up of lignin again very very important now coming on to epidermis as i said epidermis usually is seen uh, thicker in the cases of dry climate because it is waxy it prevents the water loss from the plant so it's a very important function and it is single celled again very very important epidermis is usually single celled if it is a aerial plant what would happen the outer layer would be the epidermis would be waxy and it would also be water resistant it would provide protection against the loss of the water provide uh, protection against invasion from any fungal or parasitic infection that could be seen and it is a continuous layer that is seen across the surface within this you have little of intercellular spaces that are seen and these are flat again a very important characteristic of epidermis is the outer walls are thicker as compared to the inner walls so outer walls are much thicker much more we could say rugged as compared to the inner wall in this epidermis you have stomata now stomata you have the guard uh, the kidney shaped guard cells that are present and these guard cells have a unique function in the exchange of gases and the function of transpiration that is seen again epidermis is also present in the roots in the roots the idea is to absorb maximum of water because of the long hairs of the epidermis that are seen these long hairs what they do let's say it's just one of those so this is the surface area that's covered but if there are 10 such of those hairs what would see what you would see is the surface area for all of those 10 now since you have so much surface area what would happen a lot of water absorption can quickly take place so that's very very important increasing the absorptive surface because of the epidermis uh, epidermal layer that is present in the roots also as in as the plant gets older what would happen the outer protective tissue would get certain changes that would be seen a layer of secondary meristem which is located in the cortex which mainly forms the cork cells would be part of it and these cork cells are usually dead these cork cells were first discovered by robert hook as we have talked about in a chapter on cell and these cork cells which are dead are arranged in a very compact fashion with no intercellular spaces and you have substance which is known as suberin so we talked about cellulose, we talked about lignin in the case of skull and chyma and coming on to suberin in the cases of coccyls or where you have a kind of uh, secondary meristem that is seen. So these suberin makes it this layer totally impervious to exchange of gas or water. So that's very very important. So this is uh, most important component that you understand is suberin here. So we talked about the simple permanent tissues. I repeat again simple permanent tissues you have parenchyma storage, cholenchyma flexibility and bending mechanical support, scolenchyma stiffness rigid or hard uh, hardness that is usually seen and then we focused on epidermis which is the single celled outermost layer and different uh, regions have different functions the functions of epidermis and roots are different as compared to the other parts coming on to the complex permanent tissues complex permanent tissues as i said you have xylem and phloem phloem and xylem what is the difference first of all xylem when you have the plant and the roots xylem takes all the water and the mineral from the roots to the leaves and phloem basically processes the uh, food in the leaves and from the leaves it transports to the other parts of the plant 
So phloem is you can remember as full. So you have everything that is manufactured, which is being transferred to the plant. And xylem basically takes all the water and minerals <coughs> from the roots to the leaves for processing. Now together, the xylem and phloem are called as conducting tissues because they are conducting. They are conducting either water, mineral, or food. So they have a process of conduction that continuously takes place and then these are part of your vascular bundle. So complex tissues whenever I say you have more than one type of cells they perform something which is common to them and these are very very important to understand. Now we will understand the components of xylem and phloem one by one. So xylem you have four components that are seen. The first component of the xylem is trachytes. The second component is vessels. The third component is xylem parenchyma. And the fourth component is xylem fiber. Of these, listen very carefully, of these only xylem, paren xylem parenchyma is the one which is living. The, the rest of all are not living. Xylem fiber, as the name suggests, since it's fibrous, the function is supportive in nature. Trachytes helps in conduction. So be it gymnosperm, be it angiosperm, the main function of the trachytes is con uh, conduction of water. Vessels have a unique function of conducting water to the sideways. So basically conducting water to the branches. So spreading to the branches is the main idea of the vessels. Both vessels and trachytes have a thick tubular uh, structure that is present and their movement is more or less vertical and vessels specifically sideways. However, as they mature, they are dead cells. So that is the basic function and the basic understanding of the xylem. Now, Coming on to the next, which is phloem. Interesting part is xylem is made up of four components. However, phloem is made up of five components. The easiest way to remember is xylem has five letters. So it is made up of five minus one, which is four components. And phloem has six letters. It is made up of six minus one. So you have five components that are present here. That's a way. So you usually have certain mnemonics that help you understand the concept better. Now, this phloem is divided into five types. The five components rather. So the first is sieve cells, sieve tubes. Then you have companion cells, phloem fiber and phloem parenchyma. Of these, sieve cells are tubular structure that have perforated walls. Okay, <clears throat> so you have uh, sieve cells are tubular structures with perforated walls that are seen. All of these are living except phloem fiber which is non-living. Now be very very careful the difference between xylem and phloem. In xylem, you had only one living which was xylem parenchyma. Here, in phloem, you have only one non-living component which is phloem fiber. Rest of all those are living. The next is companion cells. You have no perforated walls that are present for the companion cells. And as I said, you have the process of conduction of food that actually takes place from the leaves to the various parts of the plant. Now this is the whole story about the plant tissues.